carbohydrates. I'm finding need to talk about this uh, macronutrient because this is the major source of problems. And most of us are addicted to carbohydrates to an extent that when we talk about carbohydrates, it becomes a serious problem. We've talked about uh, chapati addiction and wheat addiction. So you can find that video and watch. But today I'm going to talk about carbohydrates. Basically, this is what we call, uh, what we call sugars. So another name for carbohydrates is sugars. Now, carbohydrates are divided into two. The complex and the simple carbohydrates. The problem is not in the complex. The problem comes in the simple carbohydrates. Now, if you realized, I keep insisting on not taking fruits, avoiding milk, which is pasteurized for that matter, and uh, avoiding honey, and also the sugar that you add in tea. The reason why I'm saying that is because all those are simple carbohydrates. And these are the problems for humankind. Now, when you take simple carbohydrates, they are broken down faster in the mouth and they are absorbed faster. Now, this absorption causes a spike in insulin levels in blood. Why? Anytime you eat a carbohydrate, you break it down from the mouth. Then it is absorbed quickly into the system. Now, once it gets quickly into the system, we want, we want, we expect a normal curve for increase of uh, insulin. However, this one will bring a sharp curve. Now, this sharp curve is the problem because this is the one that will give you insulin resistance in future. So we want to avoid this so that we get near to the normal curve. Now, in the blood, there is a normal or a level, a certain level of glucose that beyond which you go into hyperglycemia, which is high blood glucose, and below which is hypo. Now, that level is maintained by insulin. Once you eat, then you get this spike because of quick absorption of simple carbohydrates, then the pancreas produces insulin to go and lower or rectify these spikes. Now, that insulin, sometimes you, the, the receptors for insulin on the cells get overwhelmed, and that is basically insulin resistance. That's a story for another day. Just get it that these spikes are the ones that are caused by simple carbohydrates. On the other hand, the complex carbohydrates are high in fiber and starches, and this makes them hard to break down. So they are, breaking, they are broken down slowly, and therefore their absorption is also regulated. So once they are broken down, they are absorbed slowly, and therefore you will experience a normal curve for insulin in the blood. That is what we need. And that's the reason why I insist on people taking complex carbohydrates as their sources of carbohydrates and not the simple carbohydrates. Now, examples of simple carbohydrates has to be fructose, and fructose is the number one leading problem or cause of liver problems, which is a fatty liver. That will affect your hormones. That will affect your metabolism of other substances. And that is the problem that will start, uh, that will yield insulin resistance, the fatty liver. Now, fructose is found in honey. Modern honey is highly adulterated. Traditional honey was seasonal. Traditional fruits, again, were seasonal. But modern honey and modern fruits are always in season and they are highly adulterated. And this is the problem uh, with the modern day man who is suffering from a fatty liver and chronic metabolic uh, conditions like diabetes and hypertension and even cancer. Number two has to be galactose and lactose. Those are milk sugars. Now, I want you to know pasteurized milk, the one that you buy in the supermarkets, the one that is packaged, has zero nutritional value. Why am I saying that? A baby, when he suckles the mother, they do not need to boil this milk. For a reason. Nature designed it to be that way. Now, human beings have evolved to start boiling milk because they have messed up their guts and they start thinking that anything is a threat. So that when you drink animal straight from uh, uh, milk straight from a cow, then you're thinking of brucellosis because already your gut is messed up and therefore it cannot control the bacteria that comes in with food. Okay, now, so milk that is pasteurized, first of all, it has preservatives, which is a problem. Number two, protein in this milk have been denatured because of high temperatures. Pasteurization happens at 62 degrees C and 128 degrees C. And that is beyond 40 degrees C, the normal one that we know uh, from biology, that proteins will be denatured above or beyond 40 degrees C. Also, the structure of carbohydrate in this milk has been destabilized, and therefore... This is junk, okay? So avoid pasteurized milk. Most of you 
have experienced bloating as a result of taking pasteurized milk. However, you still take it because of addiction. Number three, sugar has to be glucose. This is the end product of carbohydrate metabolism. So at the end of all this, we have to break them to get glucose. The only sugar that is not broken down to get glucose is fructose. Fructose is broken down to give you triglycerides. So it is the only sugar that is broken down in the liver to give you fat. And that fat is uh, deposited in fat cells. And that is the cause of uh, obesity, the first source of obesity. So that is the reason why we are avoiding simple sugars and trying to concentrate on com complex sugars. Now, where, what are the sources of these complex carbohydrates? We already gave six. And for those of you who have been here for, for some time, they know the six. Number one is sweet potatoes. Number two is pumpkin. Number three is butternut. Number four is arrowroot. Number five is beans. Number six is green bananas. Yes, so those are the six major sources of complex uh, carbohydrates or fibers for that matter. And starch. So these are the foods that you're supposed to concentrate on as your sources of carbohydrate. Why? Because of the same, same reason that they do not cause a spike in insulin in your blood. And they will not cause you metabolic syndrome. Good. Now, I want to clear some misconceptions about carbohydrates. Number one, that if you don't eat or if you're fasting, then you'll get into hypoglycemia and then you might end up fainting or you might get problems. I want also to tell you that when you're fasting, your body just switches from getting uh, external carbohydrates to breaking down proteins and lipids or fat to give you glucose. So there is no single day that that blood glucose, the normal level for blood glucose will be altered because you can replace carbohydrates and still get energy from uh, fat and protein through a channel called gluconeogenesis. Okay, so that is misconception number one. Misconception number two, that natural sugar is <laughs> better than processed or synthetic sugar. Now, the normal question that we do ask, this is in your head, this is not in your liver. The liver does not recognize any sugar as natural or processed. Once it gets into the bloodstream and goes to the liver, the liver knows it as fructose and therefore it takes it to the channel of fructose breakdown to give you triglyceride, which is fat. If it is glucose, if you've eaten pizza, for example, you will take in glucose, not the pizza. So it's you who knows this is pizza from your head, but the, the, the liver and the stomach doesn't know that it is pizza. So the liver knows it as glucose, so it takes it into breakdown of glucose. Uh, the channel of breakdown of glucose to give you ATP. So be warned that there is no difference between natural and processed sugar for a reason. Here we only have added preservatives and some chemicals. The natural is still the active ingredient has to be uh, glucose or fructose. So ignore that and that's why when you tell me natural fruits at sugar and fruits is natural and the other one is processed is a question. Okay. Now number two, ugali, rice and wheat. Uh, are healthy that is questionable why modern day ugali you you buy flour from the supermarket i don't want to mention brands because it will be a problem so this is basically you're eating starch well it's a complex carbohydrate however it has gone through processing so there is no husk and husk is fiber which is supposed to be food to the microorganism in your stomach so basically you're only eating uh, uh, junk number two Rice is the same process. Whether white or uh, brown rice, they are still the same. Okay, So it is still rice and it is still a simple carbohydrate. Number three is wheat. We've talked enough about wheat. We've talked about gluten, which is highly inflammatory to your gut and it will cause you gastritis. We've also talked about wheat addiction. Now, interestingly, what does this uh, simple carbohydrates do? They give you something called dopamine addiction. So anytime you eat sugar or uh, simple carbohydrates, they cause a spike in dopamine levels in your head. Dopamine is a hormone that gives you the feel-good effect. Now, once you eat this, they give you they, they, the body releases a reward in terms of uh, dopamine. And this reward is the one that keeps you addicted to these simple carbohydrates. So, basically, you're not eating them because they are healthy, but you're eating them because of their addiction to sugar. So, avoid simple carbohydrates. And... If you start fasting, that is the major way to avoid simple carbohydrates. Once you fast, you take your taste buds back to normal, and then you, re, uh, uh, you reset your dopamine receptors, and therefore, dopamine addiction disappears. Now you start testing foods in their normal tests, and you realize the effects of avoiding sugar. They are very profound, and they disappear 
as soon as you stop taking sugar. Now, another thing, most of you, when you've added weight, remember you've eaten carbohydrates because fat will never get you fat. I keep insisting that animal fat will never get you fat unless you're consuming seed oils that are highly inflammatory because of omega-6. Now, if you eat animal fat, you will never grow fat. The one that, uh, the, the micronutrient that gets you into get, be, being fat is the simple carbohydrates because it's broken down to glucose. And if you don't have an activity, a physical activity that you're doing to consume this ATP, the liver converts that glucose into glycogen, stores it. And the extra one is stored, converted to fat and stored in fat cells. The other one is taken to the muscle cells to give you the energy that you require skeletal muscles for walking and doing those activities. Now, assuming you've not, uh, you're not working out or you're not involved in heavy physical activity, therefore the food that you ate, because 90% of our plates are carbohydrates, so the food that you ate is taken to the liver processed, give, uh, you, you get your glycogen which is stored in the liver, so you have a lot of glycogen stored in the liver. And since you have this glycogen and you're not using it, the more you, you feed your body with carbohydrates, the more the fat you get because it will be converted to fat. So the more big you get and that's what leads to obesity. So you can imagine you're still eating it because you're addicted to dopamine and you're addicted to your wheat. You keep on eating this because the body demands or starts craving for this because of the addiction. You want to feel good. Now, once that comes in and obesity sets in, the next thing you get is a gym trainer who tells you start, you have to start running on a treadmill. Now, if you are obese or extremely overweight, please do not go into the gym and run on a treadmill. You will not lose weight. Remember, your upper body has more weight than your lower body when you're obese. And that means anytime you run or exert, uh, you run on a treadmill, you're exerting pressure on your extremities. And you might end up even getting inflammation of the joints, which you call arthritis, yet you want to lose weight. So you will disappear. You will run away from that gym. So it is my duty to remind you that if you are extremely overweight, you have to fix your diet. Once you fix your kitchen, basically cut off simple carbohydrates immediately in your diet. Cut off fruits. Cut off fruit juices. Be it uh, blended juices or the ones that are processed. Cut them off. Cut off honey. Cut off tea sugar. Cut off milk. Processed milk. Okay? And all these simple carbohydrates. The ugali, the rice, and the, the, and the wheat. So basically replace this with complex carbohydrates. The six that we just mentioned. Once you replace them with those six, then the body starts uh, readjusting. You now uh, move from insulin resistance to a normal functioning, you start losing weight. So remember, 80% of weight is lost in the kitchen through diets. So once you cut off simple carbohydrates, 80% of your problems uh, concerning weight are already disappearing. Now, once you attain a certain weight that is bearable, now you can go to the gym. If you are a man, do not go and run 30 minutes on a treadmill. Concentrate on complex or compound exercises that will help you boost your testosterone and have that manly structure. If you're a woman, aerobic exercises are good because they boost your levels of estrogen. Okay, So yes, you can do aerobic exercises as a woman, but concentrate mostly on uh, exercises that boost or that uh, uh, strengthen your muscle and your core, which uh, we mentioned in a previous video about the gym. Good, so basically that is uh, all about carbohydrates. Also remember, uh, simply, the, the, the takeaway message is cut on simple carbohydrates as much as you can for you to lose weight. Cut again this for you to start reversing insulin resistance. So if you want to avoid diabetes, hypertension, cancer and stuff, then this is the way to go. So basically eat these complex carbohydrates in conjunction with protein and animal fat for you to have a maximum output out of these macronutrients.